music is all upbeat today. <laughs> At least I've got the music working, which is making me very happy. Welcome to the live stream, folks. Um, last week, my music wasn't working. It's working this week, so that makes me happy. Uh, I don't know what it was. I just disabled the two things and then re-enabled them, and it's all working now. So that, that makes me happy. Um, I'm just going to check on the meetup group, see if anybody needs anything there. I did do the best job of setting up my meetup this week, so... I don't know how many folks will be joining us today. Yeah, there's only 12 RSVPs. I need to do a better job of setting up these new meetup events for future live streams. <laughs> but anyway. All right. Um, so last week, I had some fun and games with XDebug, <laughs> if you remember. Uh, and then literally half an hour after I finished the stream, I did what I always do, which is go Googling, or well not Googling, go searching in the code for Xdebug. Um, and what I found was that there is a .env file um, sitting in the root of the project. So that led me down to a path that I discovered that the WordPress core code base is not using WPENV under the hood. I thought it was. Um, it's using Docker but it seems to be a custom Docker setup specific to the WordPress core code base, which is fine. But it doesn't use WPENV and it doesn't use all the settings that WPENV enables. So I did a little bit of Googling and I discovered this ENV file and essentially there is the ENV configuration variable to enable xdebug. So xdebug is installed um, on, the, on the Docker instance, I guess. Um, and it just needs to be set to true. So the two ways you can do that is you can either set that variable there to true or you can set it as a local environment variable. Um, now, I did have a... Let me see if I can find it quickly. Um, I'm on a Mac, so create environment variable. Uh, I wonder if this is the one. Yeah, I was looking at this one, I think. Um, basically, the way you do that is you can either put it in a bash profile file um, or you can just run a command on the command line to set up the environment variable. Um, if you're on a Linux environment, you'll be able to do a similar thing. Uh, if you're on a Windows environment, I haven't worked with Windows for a number of years, but I'm sure it's possible to do it on Windows as well. So if you go Windows environment variables, uh, set a path and environment variable in Windows, it's probably going to be in the settings somewhere. Uh, Advanced system settings, environment variables button, and you can set it there. Um, so that's how you would do it in Windows. But essentially in a Mac, it's actually quite easy to do. Um, you go to the command line. There's a command called env that you can run, which will show you all your currently, uh, your current local variables. So I have things like homebrew, homebrew prefixes set up and paths and current users and all that kind of nonsense. Um, and then you can run a command called, like uh, called, but a command like this where you say export local PHP debug equals true. So if I run that and run env again, then I will see there is the local PHP X debug equals true. And now when I npm install and build dev and all of that, I've, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip all of that. I've done that all before this session. Now if I run npm run env start inside of this environment, so let's go development projects, WordPress develop, and let's run that command. Now it should all just work. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit annoyed that it took me like an hour <laughs> to not get this right last week. Um, but that is the long and the short of it. Uh, it's not it's not very well documented in the README. Uh, so if you do a search for xdebug in the README, it doesn't exist there. Um, I found it because I did a search in the code base. So I did a whole search in the code base for xdebug. Um, and that's where I stumbled across the env files. I was hoping, so in, in Laravel, you can set up a .env.local file. 
and you can then override variables in that file. And I was hoping I was able to do that, but that doesn't seem to be possible. Um, so the way to do it is to set it up as an environment variable. It looks like, so this is something I might do if I have some spare time in the future, if you're interested in all of this. It looks like uh, it's using a package called .env, which is a JavaScript package, uh, NPM package, which does support running um, additional files. Let me just find it here. Uh, multiple environments. So you use the env file path when you run your Docker commands or something. Um, and so you'd be able to specify .env, da, 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 da. maybe you can check if one exists or not and then run it. So I'm hoping to maybe see if I can contribute that to the to the developer environment for, for the core code base, because that would be cool, I think, to be able to override some of those settings and then maybe even document some of those settings because there's a whole bunch that's being set up here that you could you could make overridable. Um, but that's for another day. I'm not going to worry about that today. But essentially, now that I've got my WordPress developer running, if I go to my info file, which I've already got left over from last time, you will see there is xdebug. Yay! <laughs> um, and it's all set up and configured. And if I switch to, let's uh, go into the settings file, for example, um, and let's add a, a breakpoint somewhere. Uh, and then I'm using the, uh, I'm, I've recently switched to Firefox for my browser out of interest sake. So I'm using the Firefox debugging extension. Um, should I see what it's called? Xdebug helper is what it's called for Firefox. There's one for Chrome as well. So I have that enabled currently. Um, and if I run this, Everything should start working. Oh wait, I probably haven't. I haven't enabled. No, I haven't. Start listening for PHP debug connections. I haven't set that up. So let's do this again. Yay, debugging. <laughs> I love it. Um, so this is the PHP Storm debugging interface. You have the debugger, you have the console, you have the output. Uh, the debugger shows the files that are being loaded. It shows the variables that have been set global variables. Uh, you can add things to the watch list, all that kind of thing. You can step through the code. Uh, very, very helpful finding problems and figuring out problems. Um, so that's where we're going to continue today. Before we do that, though, I just wanted to mention that if you're not using PHP Storm, um, which I know a lot of folks are doing, it is possible to set up Xdebug in VS Code, for example. Um, so there's a, I'm going to do a search for a more of an open source blog. So dev community has one, dev.to. Um, and essentially it is a, let me find it here. It is the PHP debug plugin for VS Code. Uh, you install that. I'm actually going to spin up my VS Code instance because I do use VS Code when I'm presenting videos and things, and I'll show you. Uh, so I do have that extension installed here. There's the PHP debug extension. Um, and then in the settings, I think it is. No, it's not in the settings. Uh, settings.json, I think it is. Um, have I got it here? I know I've configured this at some point. Um, no, maybe I'm wrong. Let me go back to the doc. Uh, let's see what they say here. Oh yes, you you create the launch.json file, which I think it's added in your current project. Uh, and then you say run and debug, create the file. Uh, you set up the various things. Kind of looks like this. So this, you'll see, you'll recognize this, you know, path mappings and all that kind of stuff. Um, this you will see in the WPENV file as well. Uh, and then you run, you click on start debugging. Um, and off you go and you can debug in VS Code. So it is possible. Um, I am planning a lesson on doing this in D uh, VS Code one day, a video lesson for Learn WordPress, uh, but it'll only be when I get around to the advanced developer learning pathways. Um, but there is, some, there is some good documentation out there on how to do it, um, and it definitely is possible. Um, okay. So now that we have debugging enabled, I can start debugging this issue. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly log in here with my password manager. That's, that's how I don't share any passwords with anybody. Um, 
And here's the issue that I was working on. Looks like nobody started working on it yet, so that's great. Um, and we determined that when we register the REST API init permission callback, um, doing it wrong is not being fired properly, which is exactly what we discovered the very first session. So I'm going to set up this, this workspace again now. Um, and then I'm going to dive into the register rest root function and see exactly what's going on. So first step is to create the plugin, the test plugin for us, for ourselves. Um, so I'm just going to create that here in the, in the local source. I can always delete the plugin later. Oh wait, is that still my example plugin? Hey, it's still there. <laughs> cool. Um, so let's, yeah, that's all still there. That's cool. Um, let's make sure this all still works. So let's put some debugging in there. I'll set a breakpoint there. Um, and let's check that. Ooh, the other thing I probably need to do is I probably need to make sure I have the latest version of the code just in case something's changed this. So I always do this before I... No, I don't want my one. I want... No, I don't want that one. I want my one. Um, and I want to sync the fork. And then I'm going to just stop the local dev environment, do a pull, do a rebuild, and start it up again. Okay. And then let's go find the readme. Is it again? Bolt dev and then start npm run bolt dev. npm run bolt dev. Sip of coffee while we wait. Move my camera slightly. Oh, down, not up. Uh, there we go. No. Better. There we go. I have a standing desk, and when I stand up, my camera's in a slightly different spot to when I sit down, so I keep moving it around. And I was standing this morning, and so I moved it. And I'm not happy about that. I need to find a better solution for this. So, I don't know, maybe a new camera or a different camera. I don't know. Um, but it'll do for now. All right, that's all done. So let's start the development environment. And then let's check that the plugin is installed. I really wasn't expecting so many things to have to download now. <laughs> Anywho. Okay. Uh, so let's check that the plugin is installed. Oh, still got a breakpoint. Okay, at least it's working. <laughs> uh, Oh, now it's indexing all the updates. All right. Come on. How long does it take to log into the WP admin on a local server? This is one of the other reasons I don't like Docker. It tends to be really slow on my machine. Um, or any machine that I work on. Anyway. That's a problem for another day. Okay. Let's check the plugin. Yeah, the plugin is there. Uh, so now let's test out the, let's just, I'm gonna disable that plugin for now. Actually, I'm gonna leave the breakpoint. I'm going, no, it's not a breakpoint. Why did it do it that way? Weird. I'm going to stop listening for connections and I'm gonna just test this um, uh, 
uh, REST API endpoint first. So let's do this. Static P JSON sample plugin or items, I think it is. I think it was that. Yeah, there we go. Item one, item two, item three. Cool. Um, okay. So let's put a breakpoint in there. One thing about setting breakpoints that I always get caught by is to never set them on your function declaration. That that's why it's showing me a square. Set them on code that will be executed, um, not on a function declaration, because it generally it doesn't break on the function declaration. It sets it where the code is going to be executed. Um, so let's actually make this a little bit. more verbose. Oh, it doesn't set that data very well correctly. And then we can return data and then that will give us two lines of code to at least work with. <laughs> All right, and then we can put the breakpoint on the data and then we can, and then at least it's something. Uh, okay, cool. Let's see, let's enable debugging. Is that enabled? Wonder. Wonder if it can't be enabled on REST API endpoints. That's largely annoying. That's frustrating. Okay, doesn't matter uh, because we can set the breakpoint here and then that's where the permission callback should be happening anyway. So let's do that. And then let's just refresh the home page, for example. Oh wait, it might not trigger because it's, uh, it's on REST API in it. Um, I need it on a REST API. Why is it not working? Um, okay, let me try this in Brave. Maybe the Firefox extension is just being bleh. Pretty sure I got it working. Let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, we can enable debugging there. So let's do that. Okay. But, oh, I wonder if that was the problem. Anyway, there we go. Okay. So that's all doing what we wanted to do. That's cool. So let's run through that. And then let's go back and enable the debug breakpoint there. Let's just test this in here. Ah, it did work. I think the extension is broken or something. Okay. So we are here now. And now we want to dive into this. So we want to step into register rest root. Boom. Okay, we're there. So now we're re registering the rest root. If empty, it's not empty. So it's not gonna um, worry about that. Okay. So run about where? Permission callback is where we should start having trouble. So let's just step over. That's fine. That's all fine. It's fine. Okay, so now we're getting here. Hmm. Args is an empty array. See that? There. Args just has one one item. No, it's not empty. It does oh no, it does have. Oh, it looked like it was empty there. So args has, let's add a watch to args. Okay, so now we're watching the arguments array. So let's watch that. So args has an array of one item. That item is get. That's the callback function. And then we're going to go by arg group. So let's step into that. Okay, so arg group is there. 
it doesn't have the permissions callback, so we should get to that point. Yeah. Let's add our group to the watch. Okay, there's our group there. This, this, I don't know about you all if you can hear the music, but it's definitely getting me into a debugging mode. It's very funky and upbeat. Um, okay, let's step over that. Okay, our group still doesn't have a permissions callback. Okay, here we go. If not is set our group permissions callback. So now we should, if we step into this, we should get to the doing it wrong. Okay, so that does seem to be working. Function name. So we should go into the doing it wrong now. Okay, so these are translation functions because of all of this. So let's step over that. Okay, do action doing it wrong run. Function name register rest root. Version the rest API root definition. For example, plugin all items is missing the required permissions callback. For REST APIs, roots, so that looks like it's doing, so it's hooking into the doing it wrong run with the function name, the message, and the version. Hmm. Okay. Oh, so that's, oh, so that's just doing an action. So that's fine. Okay, so here we go. So if wdbug, which is true, and apply filters, hook name, doing it wrong trigger error, yeah. I thought it was doing it wrong trigger error. I wonder if that's the problem. Let's see. See, it jumped right over all of that. Doing it wrong trigger error. I bet you that's the problem. Okay. I'm going to set a breakpoint there. So this is inside of the doing it wrong function. Filters whether to trigger an error for doing it wrong calls. Okay. So my guess is that this Is returning doing the wrong trigger error. Let's have a look at that. Filters whether to trigger an error for doing it wrong calls. Now I wonder. Let's see if something is hooked into that for the REST API. That. Registers the REST filters. If it's serving REST request, deprecated rec reporting. Hmm. <laughs> so it looks like this is done on purpose, possibly. Doing it wrong trigger error is set to false. So theoretically, if I remove that code right now, it should trigger the error and it should log it to the log. I wonder if it's being disabled because you don't want errors to show up when a REST API call is being made. But then the, uh, see now I'm thinking, I'm rubber, duck, rubber ducking to myself. You see, if WT bug and that, that returns false, that was true. That returns false, so it becomes false. Mm. I'm going to have to think about this for a bit. Okay, so let's test out this theory. Let's see if we're right here. So let us comment out that code for now. Um, you could flood the logs. Well, exactly. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That's why whenever I see something like this, I don't assume that it's done incorrectly on purpose. Um, 
this is a very valid point. So if somebody is hitting a REST API endpoint, um, I want to say it's Andrew or Ashley, I can't remember which. <laughs> uh, I think it's Ashley, if I'm remembering correctly, is mentioning that uh, if somebody's hitting a REST API endpoint and you're triggering that, that error, then you're going to have that issue. The thing is, though, what should happen is when the root is registered and the permission callback is missing, it should trigger the, the error. The problem is registering the root is happening on the REST API in it. So it's only going to be fired when the REST API request is made. So you could, again, it's going to again call Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I connect with so many people that I forget names. I do apologize. Um, so that's interesting. Um, it's definitely wrong that the permission, not setting the permission callback doesn't register an error. But I understand why this has been added. Let's test if this does work, if this is if this does hack, fix the problem. Uh, I'm going to turn off debugging for a second. And I'm going to check that I've got uh, oh yes, if I want to set I think I've got debugging enabled. Which I think is in the env file, actually. Not sure. I think it's enabled by default. Yeah, debug is true. Debug log is true. Debug display is true. So it should show the error. So let's turn that off and let's refresh the request. Okay, that timed out because I took too long. Uh, let's go back here. That's fine. Um, okay, so that's definitely triggering the error now. But as, as Andrew points out, that's going to happen every time. So this is interesting. Um, we almost need to... See... Is serving REST request... What happens if I refresh this? This sort of goes up higher up in the chain because in serving REST request determines whether the WordPress is currently serving a request. This code is not serving the request but it sets up things to serve the request. So, yeah, my problem here is none of these, um, none of these will be firing then. This is an interesting problem to have. Um, I apologize if I pronounce your name, your nickname incorrectly, but Salik, I think. Saliku Langara says, hi, where can I find last week's recording? Yes, I can share that with you. Um, it is on the WordPress YouTube channel. So youtube.com WordPress. And if you go to the playlists and if you click on the where is it now? Um, it's online workshops playlist. I think anyway, it'll be in it'll be in one of the recent videos. Here it is. I'll find this one. Um, so there's last week's video where I messed it all up completely. Um, Salia, sorry, I apologize. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Uh, ah, I can't paste it. Um, there's the link. And then it's part of a playlist, or at least it should be part of a playlist. 
Um, but I can't remember what that playlist is called now. Um, I wonder if it's learn WordPress. Let's see. Learn WordPress tutorial. No. Learn WordPress online workshop. There we go. So there's the full playlist. And it's supposed to be the latest video in that playlist. There it is down the bottom there. Oh, that's part two. Part three is not there yet. Anyway, that's the link. You can find it there. Um, it'll be around there somewhere. I usually add it to the meetup group, but I think I forgot last week, so I apologize. Um, okay. So this is interesting um, because looks like I'm going to look at the documentation for register this route. I find where I disabled that plugin code. I can't find it now. Um, so We either need to somehow, I wonder, so the one way you could fix this, and I've seen this kind of thing before, is if we did something like this. I don't know if it's gonna work though. Uh, let's try. So if we go in here, now I'm gonna to have to find where that was happening now. Um, let's just do a quick search for the trigger area. There. What you could do is you could, in the in the register rest route, down here where the callback story is happening, there. You could do something like this. Um, you could say add filter. I don't know if this will work though. And you could return true. Um, And then after this is run, you could go back to return false. I don't know whether this is going to work. This is possibly an option. Let's see.
Okay, that does trigger the error. It's not ideal that it's triggered this way. Um, but it will at least trigger the error if debug logging is on. Um, hey, P. George V. <laughs> um, so that's one option. Don't know if that's a solid option, but it will fix that problem specifically. You probably don't even need to. You probably should do this. I don't know if I like that solution though. Feels feels dirty. <laughs> um. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment on this ticket. Um, and then I'm going to share the ticket in the REST API channel and I'm going to ask folks for feedback because it really should trigger the error um, if the debug log is enabled um, It'll be interesting to figure out what happened before 5.8, but if I had to guess, it was probably the, um, the check disabling those things. So, okay. How to compile this note, right. So I'm going to, I'm going to watch this ticket first of all, so I get any updates to it. And then I'm going to do the following. In testing this ticket out today, discovered why this is happening. So let's go to, so this is WordPress develop functions of PHP. What I like to do when I log these things is I like to include a link to the actual file so that folks can see what's, what's going on. Um, Ashley says apply a filter with a high callback, essentially what we did, yeah. That was my idea as well. Um, so I'm glad that somebody agrees with me. <laughs> so if we go to w includes functions, I love how old school this is. All of these files just inside the includes folder. Um, and then we go looking for doing it wrong. Uh, let's keep finding doing it wrong. Here we go. Uh, so you just go down to inside of the doing it wrong. So I'm going to copy this permalink. Okay. Inside the doing it wrong function definition. 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 Um, the following check is done before triggering the error. And then what I like to do is I like to link to the file. Um, don't know how URLs work in wiki formatting, but I think that's wrong. Uh, I think, does that work? No. Uh, I wish it was markdown formatting. <laughs> uh, let's do links. How do we do links? Links, links, links. There we go. Oh, doesn't seem to. Oh, 
lost. Okay. Let's see what this. Okay, so let's copy the code out. Just add a link to function. Turn that into a link. Okay. Um, Up over here. There, there, there. Okay. Then in the uh, dip, dip, dip. Okay. No, that's the one that I want. That was the one that I added. <laughs> I want the first one. No, <laughs> last. Not that one. Not that one. That one. There. Then in the WM Clues REST API file, WM Clues REST API. Okay. WM Clues. Is that on two fourteen? Okay. In the REST API default filters function, in the REST API default filters function, this hook. In the REST API default filters function, this doing it wrong trigger error hook has the turn false callback applied to it. See, and then let's link to it. And then we can say something like this is probably to prevent either displaying any errors or overloading the log files if some third party or bot were to spam any REST API request on a WordPress site. Because the register REST root, because the register REST root function should only be called um, Well, a quote should only be used after should only be used after the REST API net hook 
This means possibly any any doing it wrong function calls any doing it wrong calls in the context of a REST API request will not be run. However, as OKV OKV points out this is not ideal when registering a REST root as it means a developer could inadvertently register a public root without specifying a permissions callback. I do try to be as verbose as possible um, when I am posting my findings. Then I'm going to say uh, one way this could be fixed is to one way this could be fixed is to add the following just before the doing it wrong call related to the mission callback check check here and then let's uh, and then we'll say it was Add is to So it probably needs to be set back to turn true afterwards, I think. Okay, in testing out the secret data, discovered why this is happening inside the doing it wrong function definition. The following check is done before tripping the error. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. If the REST API in the REST API default fault function this doing it wrong. True uh, error hook has the return false callback applied to it. Da, 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 da. This is probably to prevent either displaying either this is probably to prevent either displaying any errors or overloading the log files. This is to prevent either uh, if some third party or bot were to spam any REST API because of uh, because the register rest root function should only be used after the before the uh, should only be used after the rest api hook this means possibly any doing it wrong calls in the context of rest api request will not be run 
this means any of that. It's not possibly. That's basically what's happening. However, as OP points out, this is not ideal when registering a REST route, as it means a developer could inadvertently register a public route without specifying a permissions callback. One way this could be fixed is to add the code below just before the doing it wrong call related to the missions callback here. Add fault to doing it return true. It also probably needs to be set back to return false, return false. Uh, oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, remove the before text. I saw that, Andrew. Uh, return false afterwards. Okay, uh, now I'll read through it again. <laughs> in testing the ticket out today, I discovered what's happening inside the doing the wrong function definition. The following check is done before triggering the error. Da -da 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 -da. In the REST API default false functions, this doing it wrong trigger error hook has the return false callback applied to it. Um, there, let's make sure these work. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably to prevent either displaying any errors or overloading the log files. If some third party or bot were to spam any REST API requests on a WordPress site, because the register REST root function should only be used after the, why didn't that one work? Should only be used after, oh, probably because I was using the wrong ticks. Um, go. Good. This means any doing it wrong calls in the context of reserve request rest will not be right with any of that comma there. <clears throat> However, as OP points out, this is not ideal when registering a REST route as it means a developer could inversely register a public route without specifying a permissions callback. One way this could be fixed is to add the code below just before the doing it wrong call related to the permissions callback check here. It probably also needs to be set back to return false afterwards. The other way to do it would be to require debug log to be set to true, not debug. That would just spam the log files. Which is not the end of the world. Um, don't know. I'm going to leave that for now. Probably needs to do it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now. Um... I'm going to met the changes. So there's the note. And then I'm going to share this in the REST API channel and ask folks to comment. So um, I'm not going to change this to general. If you remember the very first session we spoke about this, I suggested changing this to general. It looks like it is kind of related to the REST API, so I'm going to leave it in REST API for now. Um, core REST API channel. And I'm going to, hi folks. And it looks, the, the, the comment that I was leaving there last week is still hi folks. I was testing this issue today. From what I can see, the problem is related to disabling any doing it wrong functions in the scope of a REST API request, which makes sense. However, as the original as the OP points out, it's not ideal when registering a REST route. I would love to get, I would appreciate any feedback on my suggested fix here. Suggestion fix, suggested fix here. Um, or any other alternative suggestions to implement a fix. 
And I'm always super polite. Thanks in advance. Hey folks, I was testing this issue out today. From what I can see, the problem is related to disabling any doing it wrong functions in the scope of a REST API request, which makes sense. However, as the OP points out, it's not ideal when registering a REST root. So that's not ideal. I would appreciate any feedback on my suggested fix here or any other alternative suggestions to implement a fix you might have. Um, that's where I'm going to leave it. <laughs> All right. Um, so we figured out why it's happening. We figured out that there's a reason that it's happening. Um, and we've left some notes. That's where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, I could go off and look for other issues now. That's definitely a possibility. My brain is full right now around this issue. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to see if I get any feedback between now and next week. If I don't get any feedback between now and next week, I'm probably going to just move on um, and find something else. Um, but sometimes this is a lot of what... Oh, I should probably... I should probably reset some things here. Um, I should probably not leave all this code the way I had it. Uh, so let's just make sure oh, that's all fine. Didn't make any changes. Oh, this was my example code that I can leave like that. Uh, settings, didn't make any changes in settings. Um, what was I saying? I've forgotten. Yes, if, if, if I don't get any feedback, by next week i will probably just move on from this issue leave it for another week if i still don't get any feedback i might start pinging some folks um i know that there's wordcamp asia coming up so folks might be busy there that's why i'll leave it for two weeks generally it's recommended to to leave comments open for about two weeks because um you know folks are busy folks are working whatever the case may be um but if if uh If I don't get a response, then I'll probably start pinging some people that I know that are working on the REST API uh, personally. Um, so there is Timothy Jacobs, Ryan McHugh, uh, Rachel Baker, Kadam White, and Jonathan Harris, or Johnny Harris. I'll probably start pinging them and just say, hey, if you've got a moment, why don't you check this out? Let me know what you think. Um, that's usually what I do. I have met a number of these folks in person so it's a little bit easier to ping them directly. Uh, it's not always something that everybody can do, but I'll probably leave it for a couple of weeks first before I do that. Um, but sometimes that is what is involved in testing an issue. Sometimes you don't find an easy fix or an easy solution. Uh, that's why I haven't submitted a patch for this one yet. Um, I wanna see what folks come back with. But yes, that's where I'm going to call it today. Thank you all for joining me. That was quite fun. I enjoyed that. We actually did something today. Um, if by next week, I don't have, where are we next week? Next week is the 21st of February. No, we can pages in March. What am I talking about? Um, if by next week, we don't have a solution for this one, I'm going to go see if I can find another issue to work on. We'll debug that. We'll see what we can figure out. Uh, I'll try and look for one that's a little bit easier to solve. Uh, maybe a good first issue, maybe not REST API related, maybe something else just to find something that's a bit easier to work on. Um, well, the easy ones do get picked up pretty quickly because they can get fixed pretty quickly. Uh, so that's where we'll continue next week. And then the week after that, so I did say that these live streams will be mostly related to contributing to WordPress, but WordPress 6.5 is coming soon. Um, it'll be released on March the 26th. Um, a rare, da, 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 I can't find the person I'm looking for now. The release candidate will be soon. So it's beta one this week, which means beta three will be in about two, three weeks time. Uh, let's see if we can find release schedule. Uh, WordPress 6.5 release. Here we go. No, that's not what I'm looking for. This is the same post I was just looking at. Um, here we go, 6.5 development cycle. 
Uh, here we go. So beta, so next week beta two will be out, and then the following week beta three will be out. And beta three is usually around the time I start testing the new release to see what's new and what's coming. So you see beta three comes out on twenty seventh, so the twenty eighth of February. Um, I think what I will probably do is a dive into the developer features coming to WordPress in six point five. So that'll be the plan for two weeks time. So next week we'll carry on with checking if there's some feedback on this issue and maybe looking for another small issue we can work on. And then the following week, 28th of February, we'll do a live stream on WordPress 6.5. Um, and then depending on how much time there is for the for that one, maybe the following week we'll do another live stream about 6.5 changes because there's a lot coming. There's interactivity API, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so we'll do some testing, we'll do some checking out of new things. So that'll be the plan for sort of the next few weeks. Okay. Um, Awesome. Thank you all for joining me. I hope that this was in some way enlightening uh, and that you learned something. Um, as always, if you have any questions around any of these sessions, you're welcome to connect with me in the Making WordPress Slack. Uh, you can find me. My name is just Jonathan. There I am. Uh, so you can find me there. You can message me anytime. Um, all of the live streams are on the WordPress YouTube channel. Um, so go look for them there. Um, and if you're interested in all these things, I'll see you all again next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh,